this guitar has some issues. Um, other than just the cosmetics of having this um, Mod Podge newspaper clippings and stickers on here, um, it also has a dinged fret. If, if you push on the C string, it doesn't even do anything. It plays this same note. The, de the fret is dinged that bad. I've read about maybe patching this with some silver solder, that that you know, is a kind of a temporary fix that'll last a little while. Especially on a guitar I'm gonna play maybe a few times a year, it might just be fine. So the plan is to kind of gut this guitar. The pick guard that came with it also had this Mod Podge stuff on it. Here's the pick guard. My wife looked up how to get this off and said, put it in warm water and do a, I use a scraper. So I've got this, I've been, it's been sitting in water. It's no longer warm for a couple hours now. I'm going to try to pick at it and see if I can get any um, of this Mod Podge stuff off the pick guard. So after a little bit of picking around with my fingernails, I've been able to get quite a bit of this to come off. So a little bit more scraping maybe with the guitar pick, and I think this is going to come clean. So the question now is how to accomplish the same thing on the guitar top. So after soaking the rest of this overnight, um, it easily scraped off with just a, like a pan scraper. Uh, plastic pan scraper. Looks like I've got some residue from maybe some super glue that was holding down something here. Maybe I'll have to see if I can get that off with some uh, acetone or some naphtha. Uh, and then I'll start working on the rest of the guitar. If I take everything off of this guitar, including uh, the neck, get all the electronics off it, I can't really soak the guitar in water. I've read that if you get a uh, like a, a washcloth and put it on it, it can kind of um, help to soak it. So, but then you might get water running into pickup cavities and ruining the wood. So I thought what maybe what I would do is put the washcloth on a flat surface, and then go ahead and put the body on top of that um, with as hot a water as I can, maybe even like boil it, and then let it sit for. A little bit and start scraping this stuff off if it doesn't come off maybe i'll just put some pictures that i like more on this but anyway that is the plan i've seen pictures with just the the black top uh, les paul 100 with the cream pick guard and these gold knobs and it looks pretty as about as good as a black guitar can look they're kind of boring so now it's time to start taking this guitar apart um, like the strings are tied on, so I'm going to just have to cut these. I think I've been cutting too many guitar strings with these pliers. They're starting to get a little hard to use. So the strings are off, and uh, I took the bridge and uh, the saddles the tailpiece and put them in a bag here. Took some measurements off those so I could reproduce those heights. And uh, got the control cavities off to have a peek at the electronics. Looks like you've got some weird connector here that kind of looks patched together. I don't know if that's factory or not. Uh, it, that runs all the way through there and kind of connects to this, the switch. So that should be easy to take it apart. And there's the control cavity all the hardware for that um, and for the selector cavity. Here we are a few hours later and I removed all the hardware from the guitar, put them all in separate bags so I didn't get them all confused like I've done previously. But the big deal is that after a few hours of using boiling hot water and a plastic scraper I got all the Mod Podge off this guitar there's maybe a little bit of spots here and there but uh, there are some imperfections in this guitar but it's not as bad as I thought it might be for how much stuff was on it so that's good news 
Also, as you can see, I removed the neck. And uh, as I'm looking through, trying to get a close up here. Um, as you can see here, there are some dings in the frets. And the one that was worst was right here, I thought. But there's actually some that are a little bit worse right here. So I'm going to try that uh, to fill that in with silver solder on the first three frets. The other ones aren't bad, just those first three. And uh, maybe I'll have to order some frets and pull those out and hammer some new ones in eventually. But we'll see how silver, so silver solder does on this. But uh, looking at the the uh, the serial plate, it looks like this is a 1997 uh, Les Paul. 100 studio um just kind of just like a les paul studio but uh, with a bolt on neck so i'm going to go through and show the parts for a moment looking at all the documentation i can find online for this model it looks like these are the 650 and 700 type um, humbuckers so um, i didn't get a really good chance to try this out so hopefully this is going to sound okay i might go kind of crazy and put some uh some humbucker covers over, over these to make the guitar look a bit nicer but again i'm not going to play this guitar very much maybe like once a month once twice a month so not really a big deal Here we have the pickup selector. This is certainly not the Switchcraft type. Um, it does have this uh, Molex style connector on the end. Um, so you can just shove that down in the cavity when it's done. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'm gonna get a new switch for this. The, the, one of the differences between the Studio and the 100 Studio is that this body's a little bit thinner. So I'd have to try to figure out if those long switchcraft switches would work in here, but they may be more than I want to spend in a guitar. That's just going to be my E flat beater guitar. So I will probably reuse this unless I can find a good deal on a nice switch. I've got my bridge and my tailpiece in this bag. And before I remove the the posts for both bridge and the tailpiece i took some measurements for how high they were so i could get back to that uh, a good starting point where i knew at least it worked before so don't really have any plans to upgrade this this is pretty s standard stuff again this is going to be my play it once or twice a month guitar so um, those are going to be fine just a note about how I got the Mod Podge off of this guitar. The first thing I did was I got a pot of boiling water. And then I placed a rag like this on the counter and poured the boiling water on it. Took the guitar, flipped it upside down, and put this part on there because this was the safest part of the guitar. It's kind of weird when you're with the amount of water I had to deal with. Um, waters and guitars obviously don't go together very well. But that was a necessity in this, uh, this situation. So once I got the boiling water on there and left it on there for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I took the uh, plastic scraper and just started scraping. And I started catching some of the edges of some of the uh, paper, the pictures that were Mod Podged on here. And then it seemed like when you got the top layer of Mod Podge, you could kind of tear that off. It would bring up some paper and then once you got the paper wet it was really easy to get that off so it was a mat this was just a matter of sometimes putting the cloth on the counter with some hot water and having it flipped over so that it didn't run and sometimes it was just dropping the the towel with water on in certain areas Sometimes it was a matter of squeezing the hot water onto some areas, letting it soak. And in the finer places, a matter of getting like a spoon 
and very carefully putting the hot water where it needed to be. I also used some tape to cover some of the holes that I didn't want to get um, water in there. I didn't want those holes to swell. And um, eventually I had to you know, scrape past those, but it was nice to keep those plugged up a little bit. Um, it seemed like the Mod Podge would come off in about three layers. The first being the layer on top of the paper, then the paper, and then the stuff that was holding the paper to the guitar. That third layer was the most difficult to get off. It took a lot of scraping and a lot of soaking to soften that up. It seemed like it came off and it, it was kind of greenish, which was kind of weird. But with persistent soaking and scraping, I was able to get this guitar cleaned up pretty good. Now on to the most interesting part of this teardown, other than the uh, removing all the Mod Podge from the guitar, is uh, the wiring. Um, you can see here these potentiometers are little tiny things. The wire is pretty flimsy. The output jack looks okay. But uh, again, the wire is pretty flimsy, some pretty generic capacitors. But I think the most most um, the strangest thing was that somebody had glued these um, knobs onto the pots. And um, so in order to get these off, what I did was I kind of looped a piece of string around and then pulled out and up to pop these off. One of them had a really hard time and it actually pulled the shaft out of the potentiometer. Um, I recently did a video about how I converted some potentiometers. Um, and this shaft is really difficult to pull out. So uh, yeah, that one was glued in there a little good. So what I, one of the things I am going to upgrade on this is the electronics. Uh, I just can't stand to look at this. So especially since I'm going to have to buy another pot, I'm not going to buy one of these cheap pots. I'm going to just replace all of this and uh, use some nice capacitors too. One thing I didn't show is the back of the guitar. This used to have some uh, stickers on it that said, we love you. Uh, just some standing water and some scraping, and some soaking and some scraping with this. It got it off of there. So looking pretty good. I'm, I'm uh, pretty pleased with the way it's turned out. So there we go. This is phase one of this project was to kind of take everything apart and evaluate it and to see what needed to be done. So hopefully it won't take me too much to get this wiring completed and get the frets filled and leveled off. And I will post an update as I put this back together.